let's get into our first topic now. And should we ban under 16s from social media use to get your calls in? Now, the mother of murdered teenager Brianna Jai has called for the government to stop children having access to social media apps on smartphones. Esther Jai has also suggested that parents should be able to receive notifications alerting them to what their children might be searching for online. Scarlett Jenkinson, who killed Brianna, had watched videos of violence and torture on the dark web. She'd plotted the murder with Eddie Ratcliffe using messaging apps. So let's have a listen to what Brianna's mum had to say on the BBC. We'd like a law introduced so that there um, are mobile phones that are only suitable for, un that are suitable for under 16s. Mm -hmm. So if you're over 16, you can have an adult phone, but then under the age of 16, you can have a, a children's phone, which will not have all of the social media apps that are, that are out there now. Um, and also to um, have software that's automatically downloaded on a parent's phone, which links the children's phone, mm -hmm. um, and it can highlight keywords. So if a child is searching the kind of words that Scarlett and Eddie were searching, it would then flag up on the adult, on the, on the parent's phone. A hugely moving interview mm. there with Brianna Jai's mum. Uh, now, Anne, would you support a ban on young people under 16s using social media apps? Well, I think, you know, the heart goes out to Brianna's mother there and absolutely what she's talking about will be resonating with a lot of parents and frankly if I thought that this had a real chance of working I would be very okay with supporting it but I don't think it does unfortunately. Why? Well for, for a, a number of reasons really so I mean the main one is the to get the information that you need in order to enforce that ban you really need to be practically in everybody's house in the kids bedrooms and when they're out outside mm. the domestic sphere so all it takes is one person over 16 allegedly nearly an adult but that, that adults can be very irresponsible around social media, <laughs> as we know, let alone what do you do? So the day you turn 16 and, you and your elder brother says, well, here, you can use my messaging app and just call yourself something else. What are you going to do then? So I think the, the, what you need in terms of implementing it is very, very hard indeed. And I think it just simply wouldn't work. I think you'd end up with, if you like, a kind of black market mm. in phones apps and all of this and the clue to this terrible story is the accessing of the dark web the dark web is not going to go away because you did that people teenagers i have to say having kept a few at home are very very resourceful and they they like to test adult rules so i think where the pressure point for me is it'll be interesting you know why anything is about this but for me the pressure point is on the social media platforms mm. it's not sort of trying to stop it once it's got to the point where the user in this case the child is accessing terrible information as absolutely awful as that is we have to think more about how it could practically be addressed henry Anne makes a really good point here young people generally are much better with technology than we are. They're going to find some way around that, whether that's finding somebody else with a phone that has access to yep. these things that they want or just some way of manipulating their phone around it. That's true, but we could say the same about you know, smoking, about driving, about alcohol, about all the things that we protect children from until they get to 16 or 18. And I think we should do as much as we can to make it as difficult as we can for them to access this material. And if it means uh, putting more pressure on these technology companies, as we saw in Congress last week when the chief executives of Meta, of, uh, of X, of Snapchat, of TikTok were really roasted over the coals by yeah, the but, senators. You know, this is the second um, time it's happened and Congress yeah. doesn't pass any legislation. Well, they're getting there. There's I think a, the yeah. uh, slowly but surely, both in that country and on this in this country, I think just a few months ago we passed uh, an act of parliament, didn't we? An online but no, safety no, it's not act. implementable. This is what is worrying well, me. Well, see, the, the, it isn't. I mean, I think the, if it were, I think I would be much more... Yeah, but I don't think we can throw up our hands and say, well, sorry, there's nothing we can do, just leave it to the parents, because mm. the parents have been trying. The, the big social media companies are investing more and more money into this, and slowly but surely, I think we will get there. If, even if it means, in the end, uh, developing a kind of phone that parents can buy and say to their children, this is for you. If it means that even if 20 or 30 percent fewer children access this terrible material, that I is a win. Benefit. OK, well, joining me now is painting expert Vicky Broadbent. Vicky, do you think banning social media is the answer? I don't, because, again, I don't think... I mean, firstly, all my condolences to 
Brianna's family, this is a tragedy. If we look at the tragedy that happened with James Bulger, children were accessing the, the, the murderers were accessing videos. I think that, um, as your guests have said, they are very resourceful children. I think that we are the first generation of parents who are having to live through this sort of digital age and this accessibility that children have. So we actually have to, we have a duty of care as parents, so to teachers, to um educate our kids but also we have to teach them to be autonomous to know how to use social media in a healthy way and the dark web unfortunately that isn't going to go away if we do this blanket ban i also think the scary thing about banning anything whether it's sugar or apps is that it becomes more enticing and more exciting if we look at kind of the problems we're having with children vaping for example um so my thing would be more to educate and support your child and teach them good, healthy digital habits, because there's a lot of good from, from social media. Mm. You know, um, my kids have learned, I've got a teenager who's learned how to edit thanks to TikTok. He's learned a lot about healthy eating. I think it's really managing that. And I actually, you know, the social platforms are accountable, they're responsible. And up until now, we've got the online safety bill that's been passed. So we're going to see um, a real crackdown on material unsuitable for children. Vicky, I hear what you're so saying. About, I, I, I hear what you're saying and what Anne's saying. And I hear what you're saying about educating and also just the fact that how are we going to stop them getting access to things that they want to get access to that they're far better and adapted at than we are. However, even if we made a simple rule change, like stop uh, making the limit or the, the age limit 13 for being on social media, if we raise that to something like 16, at least then we'd be increasing the bar because I suppose even though there's lots on there to learn, there's lots that their immature brains, their underdeveloped brains couldn't process on there, information that they shouldn't be have access to. But there are already parental controls available. Um, I think as parents, we really have to take responsibility, put tech limits on the time that our children are exposed to social media, because even with ourselves as adults, we become immensely drained from overuse. And, and as you're going through an explore page on Instagram or or anything that's, you know, FYP, -Y I think it's called on TikTok, the, the sort of pages, you are exposed to all sorts of things. Mm. Is 13 too young? Perhaps. But, you know, if we do increase it, again, I am concerned and I'm a mum of three and I've sat on round tables discussing the online safety bill in Parliament. And, you know, there are eight year olds that are being ex exposed to adult material. Mm. And that's just frightening, isn't it, really? Um, but actually, we have to really take responsibility. What are our children viewing? What parental controls? There's all sorts of apps by Google. There's family sharing apps. We have to really get involved and not be scared of it. I mean, I don't know how to use Snapchat, for example, mm -hmm. but I sort of taught myself so that I can, I can monitor and regulate what yeah. my son's doing. But I must say that the, the social platforms up until now have not taken responsibility. I had an issue with someone bothering me, harassing me on Instagram. When I went to the police, they said, oh, Facebook just won't share the intel unless it's something really serious like you've been abused and or you've you know there's been sort of murder or whatever that's gone on they just won't share it with us because we're based in the UK and they're based in America so this person who I knew it was was able to harass me constantly mm. on Instagram with no kind of but I suppose, support through the police. I suppose this is a sort of exactly the sort of thing that we don't want our 13 to 16 year olds having to experience because you're an, a grown adult and even you're struggling with it so you can only imagine the sort of impact that that might have in a 16 year old that maybe doesn't have the confidence to share that with their parents either so they're dealing with it completely on their own I mean I don't know what the answer is to this Vicky stay with us we're going to take some calls now Katie from Somerset what's your thoughts on social media for for the under 16s for children I think I think I, I agree with the policeman that actually it should be um they, they shouldn't be allowed you wouldn't allow a, a child to go when in my day mm. you go in um there would be top shelf magazines wouldn't mm -hmm. there Yes, and, and, and lots of young people would steal those magazines, so they did find ways of getting access well, to them, and I suppose that's what... Well, they, but they were top shelf, so they'd have to be pretty tall to get up there, wouldn't they? Or get somebody you know, they, else to buy it for them, yes. Yeah, yeah. yes, of course. There's always, there's always going to be that. Mm. But with both my sons, I've got a son of 28 and a son of 20, and until they were 16, 
they weren't allowed on, and it was peer pressure for them to ha- actually have the mobile phone. Mm-hmm. Um, but they never had, um, they weren't allowed on social media, media until they were 16. And once they were 16, I said, you can go on there, but you give me your PIN number so I can look on there at any time. And I'll be quite frank with you, I never looked on there once because I trusted them. Mm-hmm. And it's all about trust as well. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, parents should be taking more responsibility. You know, when um, they were on the computer and things, playing games and everything, it was done in the lounge. So, Katie, I, I'm hearing what you're saying, that parents should take on more responsibility. And I don't think actually yeah. Vicky or Anne or anyone on the panel would disagree with that. But, we've been but it's to that what, the dawn of time, haven't but we? But to what so, extent yeah. can the government and can these social media companies aid that? What, what can they do to help with that? Well, if, if there's laws, like I say, with the... The, those magazines on the top shelf at 18, don't you think that should be the same for social media? For so you think no children? social media until 18? Um, again, I've, I've made my children wary. I've said anything you put online, you, they've got to understand mm. that in 10 years' time that could bite them in the bum. I, I just think, I think 18 might be too old I, I'm not sure whether the yeah. horse the horse has bolted a bit too far for yeah. that to to be able to be put in place yeah. but I wonder I, es, Esther Jai's comments where she said you know there's some sort of process where whatever the child is looking up and the sort of things that they're seeing online will pop up on the parent's phone if they're of concern would you agree to something fun. like that I mean it sounds similar I think, to that, the, I think that would be brilliant yeah and you know it's protecting your children you know at the moment they're not being protected are mm. they well, uh, yeah, and I suppose that is the conversation we're ha- having is, yeah. you know, is banning it until 16 a, a good yeah. idea. Uh, thank you for your call. Terry from Kent, what's your thoughts? Have we, is, have we gone too far to put that ban in place now? No, we want to go further. The thing is, well, the internet, internet is a major, major problem of people being get mental, mentally ill. You know, before, the, before we got a smartphone, you very rarely had a child with mental illness. Now, they go to school, they get bullied at school, the person gets their details. As soon as they walk through the door, they get bullied at home all day, all night. The next day they go to school, get exactly the same. In the evenings, but they go on, they go on the website. Terry, I hear what you're saying, and I don't, about. I don't think anyone's disagreeing. But how do we stop that? How, how can we mitigate that from happening? You've got to get the government involved. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You know, and what do you like want them to do? To, you know, to block, to, to ban these uh, algorithms. You know, the algorithms is the main thing. The kids are going on there. They're picking up a sentence about something like murder or harming herself, and the algorithms find everyone on the internet regarding that subject. I so suppose the thing- problem with that, Terry, is first of all, I'm not sure that would be the government, that would be the apps themselves changing their algorithms so they aren't so targeted to individuals. But if you look at it from the flip side, Terry, social media has done a huge, huge amount of good for some teenagers and some young people being able to find a sort of tribe of people that they really feel comfortable with online that they can't get access to maybe at their own school or in their own normal networks. Well, yeah, but the thing is you just need more, they don't need a lot more pressure on the, you know, on the government and on the organisations to stop them organic. There's good and bad on the internet, you know, as you say, but the thing is you've got to stop the bad, otherwise you're never going to stop it and you're going to have more and more people with mental health issues as it is now. Someone I, got the mental health issue, they should be taken off of the internet. I suppose the, that the, help them. the thing that comes up against your argument here is the same algorithms that are funnelling these teenagers into to horrible things are the same ones that are funneling te- teenagers into areas where they have comfort and support and, and feel like they have a social network they can get comfortable with and it's how do you balance that Terry I'm not sure anybody has the answer yet and that's maybe part of the problem I don't know is this a scenario where actually technology has advanced far quicker than we can keep up with yeah, I think that's a, that's really well put, Storm. And it, when we heard the, the lady making the comparison about the top shelf for pornographic magazines, I mean, the fact is that's one item you can physically remove it and put it somewhere. And share between the boys as they did in and my day. Not between, me, of course. Uh, Henry, I mean, uh, it's full disclosure on this on this uh, <laughs> show. Um, but, you know, but I, I, I'm sympathetic to the idea behind it, but I think what is really hard to get heads around is, one, it's technology. It, it grows and it changes and it iterates very, very fast, which is why I rather like the idea 
idea of more of of being much more forward and much more from school and, and small years onwards to basically teach children that there is going to be risk out there. There is going to be dreadful. Yeah, but you're obviously not going to start with the under fives. No, 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 about, I, I, but I, I think understand. I think that seems to me a more realistic way of doing it than expecting the government to be able to come in and apply, if you like, mm. a sort of <laughs> a stop order I suppose to uh, apps that are changing all the time. Now, absolutely, at the at the when it comes to the online harms bill, it is really trying to target the most harmful behaviour, the bullying, the uh, sites that promote uh, suicide, some of the anorexia sites. And I'm completely fine with that. And I would love to see those companies absolutely hauled over the coals. Mm -hmm. I think that's actually shaming them. Yeah. Probably does more good than trying to come up with a platonic bit of legislation mm. that you say, oh, well, there's the perfect law. I'm afraid. I don't believe that that will work, but I think we just have to keep discussing this. We need to discuss it in parenting much younger. Yeah. What we, people talk about it when their kids are 16. It's too late by then. Mm. They've probably seen a lot more than their parents. Uh, absolutely, and I think probably you need to um, delay the age at which you give the child the first a mobile phone or tablet, because if you look at the uh, studies, I mean, something like 90% of parents believe that mental health is being damaged by this. In this is a long-term consistent surveys and results that's what we're seeing and something like 48 to 50 percent of young people children under the age of 16 say they are addicted yeah. to some of those apps so it's not helping them and we want them to have three-dimensional relationships in the real world as those of us who are born in the 60s or 70s or even 80s or <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm lucky I miss the social media I, yeah. sort of growing up in that that sphere and I'm so glad that I did my goodness uh, Vicky what do you think about just a ban on smartphones at school at least that will be what an eight hour period of the day where they don't have to deal with all the trauma that comes along with social media it also probably means they spend the majority of time on these apps and social apps at home in the presence of their parents which might benefit is that something you would support I think that's a good idea. I'm a former teacher as well and um, what I will say is that some of the schools that have introduced phones is because they're underfunded in the state system and they're using it as a resource whereby children are Googling, searching in history lessons. They're doing research with their phones. They're using their calculator. This is what I've witnessed. However, other schools that I think have really, really got it right, and high schools particularly where children are going through puberty, it's very stressful. The social media sort of implications of add just pressure, don't they? Um, they would take the phone in the morning from the child, have a drawer that all the phones get locked in with names on, and then they reissue them at the end of the day. Because the question is, we want to keep our kids safe and parents have tracking apps for their kids. If they're walking home from school or to school, many parents like myself want my son to have a phone so I know he's okay. Do I want him to use it throughout the day at high school? No, not really. I would much rather he uses a calculator that's a physical calculator. So yeah, I think there are there's a lot of room here to improve the current system. I also think we're just right at the cusp of the online safety bill being passed. Mm -hmm. We the, the whole purpose of that is to hold apps to account, to have more safety measures online, to prevent this bad material. So we're not going to see the results of that for a while. So that's going to kick in as well. So yeah, and I think as parents, there are things you can do. You can say to your child, look, you've only got an hour after school. And then that's it for game time. Because one of the things when I tried to do a bit of a two week ban um, with my team because I felt he was getting too entrenched into, you know, media, social media use, he said he was incredibly left out because he wasn't playing games with his friends. Because we've got to remember and sort of feel like if we were 14 or 13, how does it feel if everyone's playing Minecraft or everyone's playing I don't know, one of these games, and you've got nothing to talk about at school. He said to me every day at lunchtime, he didn't have a lot to talk about with his friends because the conversation was dominated by all the different games, FIFA. And because he'd been on this two-week ban, he felt isolated, not able to contribute. This yeah, is I a just, really complex situation. I do wonder whether that's where school rules and the government comes in to step in to make it easier for all parents to say no, because you're right, the peer pressure is difficult and it might just be easier if, if the parents had someone to back them up. Catherine from Surrey, what's your thoughts on this? Banning under 16s from social media, that's what we're asking. Yes, I, I agree. Well, firstly, thank you for having me on the show. Um, just to say quickly, I don't think it goes far enough. I think we should also ban under 16 from having smartphones. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, um, 
that they're going to get access somehow. But I think a dumb phone is what we need. So something where that they can make calls to their parents if they're going to school, whatever, but they don't have access crucially to the internet. I think we're heading into a dystopian society and I think something needs to be done pretty, pretty quickly. I think the problem is, though, the, the horse, horse has bolted. We've seen all the benefits that we can get out of modern technologies, including social, social networking and social uh, apps. So do you want to take that away from teenagers as well? Well, I mean, maybe this, this generation can't be helped, but certainly the next generation. I mean, I've got two small children. Um, they're, well, my, my oldest is going to be three. I'm just hoping by the time she's a teenager, someone would have... Um, tried to make things better for the next generation of teenagers coming through. So, for example, could you not have, um, if I call it a dumb phone? Yeah, I understand what you're saying by that. Access. One yeah. I would have had as a child, one that didn't have internet access and literally Absolutely. just made calls. That was all it was for, is uh, emergencies. Catherine, I hear your concerns as well with young children. I've got an 18-month-old and I'm just really hoping that anonymity becomes really cool when he's a teenager ah. and not being in social media apps yes. and not being online and nobody knowing anything about you becomes like, the end thing. I doubt it, Catherine. We're all too ego-based, but, you know, we can hope. Thank you very much for your call. Thank you, Vicky, for joining us for that conversation Thank as well. You, uh, thanks for all your calls. After the break...